Welcome to the Monday, February the 4th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Hannah Smith. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Martha Smirsky. And <clears throat> just for information, as everybody here knows since you've been on the committee or been here many times before, we're advisory to the Development Review Board, and we will hear each of the applications and move them forward. In the meantime, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So we'll second. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. The agenda is approved. And our first applicant is for 27 Court Street. Ed and Dan, come, come up to the table. Sorry. I have one chair. Thank you. Good to see you all. Hello. Hello again. Or <laughs> <laughs> familiar face. Indeed. Describe your project. Well, as you all have heard before, um, this is a long time coming to plan this renovation of this house that has sorely needed some tender loving care. Um, the house was built in 1871 and went through a number of modifications uh, since then. Um, a notable one being adding the third floor unit. It used to just be an empty attic. Um, and uh, structural issues um, presented over time and the floors are very uneven. And so this led us all to look at uh, renovating the house. There's other issues like no insulation and knob and tube wiring and some plumbing issues. and some vermin and a number of other number of other issues to address so a, a, a rather um, ambitious renovation we have planned but keeping with the spirit of it being three residential units for second and third floor one unit on each floor um, the major components we have um, that that concern this committee would be changing the windows um, but keeping all the same placements and infilling a couple of spots where the uh, windows uh, were framed but never placed. Uh, you see on the, on the eastern elevation, the driveway side. Um, replacing the doors and uh, demolishing the addition. Uh, there's a two-story shed in the back and an addition that uh, over the last few years as I've owned the house and lived in it, um, has. Uh, that space is the in the kitchen on the first and second floors. Those are the, the main uh, things we're looking at. Um, the roof line stays and the siding stays. Um, for the time being, the porch stays, although it's not in great condition itself. Uh, but the exterior will essentially remain the same with, uh, with the changes listed. Um, we'll be removing the, um, you know, one, one little detail, but it's, um, worth mentioning is that you have a Renai heater on the third floor, and you can see the Renai heater vent just to the right of the window mm -hmm. on the existing um, street side elevation. And uh, we'll be going to baseboard electric and, um, and air source heat pumps, and you won't be seeing any of that venting. Do you anticipate putting the heat pumps the external uh, on the back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, was the decision to move with this um, adding of the two windows on the gable end just purely for light? That's the main. Yeah, that's the main of this. Yeah, it's it's the southern exposure and getting more light into that space. Um, can you explain the uh, angled support bracket I've shown you? On the back porch? On the back porch? Yeah. What's that all about? Um, as opposed to why isn't it just straight up and down? Is that? I mean, yeah, it's strikingly that, different than what you would normally see. Mm, yeah. Um, I can, I'm assuming he drew that in there as just a way to um, you know, it kind of keeps the it keeps the flow from 
from the parking area into that rear door um, a little less obstructed and probably safe and that does save some money in, a, in an additional footing and prevents a footing from kind of being out there. I'm wondering if, you know, as, as you know, cars, the parking area is going to be kind of on the back side, um, maybe keeping the, maybe keeping that, that post kind of angled back and uh, supported back to the house. So it's an oversized kicker to hold the, that end of the porch roof back. Is what it is. That is what it is, yes. Yeah. Perhaps there are other ways to to accommodate that structural need. Oh, I well, it also says that that's an area for the covered recycling and trash, which is why the porch doesn't go that whole way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a lot. Yeah, no, 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 I hear you. I'm just... <coughs> from, just from yeah. a pure... Mm -hmm. Design. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a, a porch um, on a, it was a historic porch that had a, an angled bracket. It was more like a bracket or a, you know, it came down about halfway down the wall instead of all the way down sure. to the base of the mm -hmm. wall. Yeah. And I wonder if that would provide enough support mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. It might look a little yeah, I can see that. Um, mm -hmm. more traditional, you know. Mm -hmm. I like that. That would also give you headroom to go by it if you've got storage in the, you know, in that far corner of the porch for, again, for recycling. Mm -hmm. Is that is that what's intended in this area here, on the back, looking at it? Is that the storage for recycling right there? Underneath that little, yes. Uh, right, right there. Right. Exactly. Yeah, right. Oh, right correct. there. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah, there's. I mean, it's it's nice to bring that post down to the sill for structural purposes. Yeah. But there's there's no there's no reason we couldn't yeah. put a bunch of framing well, in that I know, wall. And yeah, and I know also just from um, if you're actually renting these to, to tenants, uh, mm -hmm. and they have access to this back porch, I take it. So six eight, at, I think at six eight, you need to have mm -hmm. the clearance. I don't know what this mm -hmm. ends up being, but I don't think you would have proper. Oh, gotcha. Proper I see what you're saying. So you might. Mm -hmm. I think bringing it up halfway is a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion as well. Of course, that would be more structural internally. Yeah, but in the minimally, so not, not a, not, yeah, I think that's a good suggestion as well. What you could do, and we did it in one location, is that you can take a, whatever your posts are, you could actually, particularly if you have a a stud behind it or you, you can catch a top and bottom plate take a if that's a four by four I'm not sure if there's four by four four by six six by six mount one on the wall coming down and then go halfway up that and strut out and then that gives you a significant amount mm -hmm. of yeah it'll be of stiff support it'll be gutted on the interior so all of those options okay. are, okay. are are viable mm -hmm. I see what you've got planned for new windows. Um, what are you thinking about for a door? Mm -hmm. um, the, the front door? Oh, is, that right? is it the front is door, the back door? Or? There are currently three doors. There's a front door, a back door, and a side door that's on mm -hmm. the driveway side. The proposal is to remove that door on the side, on the driveway side, mm -hmm. and turn that into a window to match all the others. Oh, I see. Uh, and then it is to um, renovate the front door and the back door. Actually, new new doors, new okay. panels. That's that's what I'm curious about. You're asking so what it is. I think, Did I know? Yeah. Is the cut sheet not in there for the no. front and the rear door? No. So the front door would be proposed to be a uh, Simpson uh, wooden door. Um, it's presently it's a very large double door mm -hmm. presently that is like you know hard to you know there to. What's so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Two, you know, they're, 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 which in its present conditions is two small doors. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the intention is to, or the desire is to make it, it's, I think it's 42 inches, Steve, if that's, oh, that's yeah, what your that's question what I was going to ask. Um, mm -hmm. um, is to make it one large door with, a, with that, with that grill, and, um, grill pattern and panel pattern. And so the front door would be a Simpson wood door. Um, the rear door on uh, the back side would be a much less expensive thermature door on the, mm -hmm. from the rear side. And the fiberglass. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why the change on the mm -hmm. front? 
the, the main reason uh, come across is that that door is in really bad condition. Um, and functionally, it's difficult to use a 20 inch wide door. Um, it has two panels, but it isn't very functional to open up both panels. It has a center lock. It's not very secure in that way either. I have actually can currently just push it open, even if it's in a locked position. Um, the, those double doors are called out in the National Register nomination as significant features of the building. Uh, Interesting. Is there a way to connect them and make a single door out of it? I mean, that door itself is in is a, a serious deteriorated shape, uh, and it's certainly not. Uh, there's been some, some significant changes to it over time. The panels are not original glass, uh, and they're not matching. Um, there is no functional lock set uh, in the door. What I'm thinking is connecting the two in some way and making a, making a, a double, a single door out of the two double doors and actually leaving those not uh, functioning as a single door. So because that's a that's a pretty significant piece of the architecture of the building. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, uh, so it would you're saying it would still be one? It would actually function as one door. Yes. Yeah. So the a new door matches the same RO as the old door. Width wise, it's very very close. Which um, is forty two, which is what you're saying. That's correct. Um, yes. So is the bottom floor going to be used for commercial? All residential. All residential. No commercial. And this will be a main entrance for, for the, the units? Yes. For the second and third floor, this would be their, their main entrance, and really their only entrance. And for the and first floor, where is their main entrance? Is that around the corner? The first floor would be in the back. That's the rear entrance. It could be, and could, you could access the first floor from the front. Mm -hmm. So ADA access is in the back. Correct. For the first floor. Mm -hmm. Is there a second means of egress from the third and fourth, in second the, and third floors? In the form of a properly sized uh, casement window. Oh, okay. Or double hung window, I can't remember exactly <coughs> how that, sh that, that worked out. Um, but it's in, the, it's in the form of a properly sized window on the second and third floor. And then how do you access back down to ground level or porch level or from those windows? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the second floor, Egresses out onto um, there is a there's um, a um, a porch roof that one can get out to, and then what I've been told is that the third floor, if it's within X number of feet to grade, um, that um, that there, that we don't need a fire escape if it's within X number of feet to grade, which. Mm -hmm. It is, which it is. My, my understanding is because 20. they haven't Excuse made oh, wait, the external changes to, to there, because mm -hmm. I talked to the building inspector, yeah. that it's basically grandfathered from the current rules that what we just said applies instead. Just as an additional backup, they make a really, as long as you're reconstructing, they make a really nice boxed fire ladder that you bolt basically to the floor and functions as a bench. And if you need to use it as a fire ladder, you flip the top down, and so I open the window, and the fire ladder throws up, and it has standoffs from the building. Oh, yeah. Mm. And you could oh. use that to get down either front, back, wherever, down to a porch roof. Huh. So just idea. throwing that out, uh -huh. we did one. Yeah. And it works as a window seat when it's not being used, which is hopefully never. <laughs> well, as long as nobody forgets about it. <laughs> I think it'll come to mind if they need it. <laughs> so if you were saying the front door specifically is classified as a character defining feature? It, it mm -hmm. is in, a, it's, uh, uh, in the package uh, here, uh, glazed double leaf doors on the east side front bay. A Victorian style one story porch. Uh, so they're called out, and you know, it's one of those. My, uh, I think, you know, that losing the architecture in Montpelier is 
not going to be by big demolition. It's going to be incremental changes. That's one of the reasons I had Meredith bring up that vulnerable from Rock. You can see how the little changes in that building mm -hmm. eventually it ends up losing its architectural character. And uh, I see some of those things in this. Uh, I see you know, three uh, changes to the front facade, the doors, the addition of the windows and the gable, and uh, the dormer that's being added. No, no dormer being, the dormer's existing. The dormer's oh. existing, okay. It okay. doesn't show any existing. It's true. That's a that's a mistake. That's I picked. I noticed that as well. Okay. And it, it didn't get corrected, but the dormer is is there presently. If you wanted to get more light into that upstairs, I think enlarging that dormer. It's a really skinny little dormer. It is. If you enlarged it, it would. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. It's yeah. just a just a financial constraint, but but the, the existing dormer and its very skinny yeah. formation is presently there. Last time I was before this committee with a prior proposal, two years ago, roughly, we had a double shed dormer uh, taking the existing roof and essentially changing it markedly, starting at 12 feet back from the facade. And from 12 feet back, the, the remaining 24 feet of the roof line would be a double shed dormer on both sides. That was a significant change. Ultimately, we've had to scrap that for now because it's just too costly get into that. Um, the front door is currently, in, for years now, has been obscured by <laughs> this uh, equally frustrating um, double metal um, storm door so panel. Just, we, we didn't give you that picture in this package. <laughs> but it's, um, okay. yeah, you for see a number of years, yeah. no one has seen that rather historic, but difficult to function uh, red door behind it um, and oh, I see. It, it, it's oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it does show in these pictures yeah 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 okay oh so you have a double followed by a double yeah double storm slash screen followed by double wood so Dan just out of curiosity how difficult could be and expensive would it be to have a single door made that is essentially replicating mm -hmm. what you have there? As yeah, door. you know the Simpson door, as it's been proposed, is you know pushing a three thousand dollar door. Um, um, you know to have one custom made. I I don't know what that answer is, but presumably more than what more than more than a three thousand dollar door. Double, triple. And I I. I I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I, I think double, between double and triple seems like a reasonable guess. Mm -hmm. And that door is not salvageable? I mean, anything is salvageable, but it's just a matter of, like, you know, you know, performance-wise, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it, these, that's, that's, that's one of these exercises where, where kind of salvaging something and making it work the way we expect a front door to work mm -hmm. would, you know, cost it, I'm sure, as much as, you know, a custom, a custom new door. A number of things in this house, including that door, things that uh, come across and said, I wish 20, 30 years ago someone had started caring about that door or that window and taken care of it or improved it at that point because some things have just gotten so degraded that it's, I mean, you can even poke your finger right into that door in a couple spots. It's so rotted out in a few spots. What is the material of the Simpson door? Fur. Fur? Fur? Yeah. It would be, be painted, though. Have you checked with a fellow between Barry and East Montpelier about building one? Oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. Oh, Bruce? Bruce, yes. Uh -huh. No, I haven't. He made a hardwood door for me that was, I mean, it's not a 42 inch door, uh, but it wasn't a thousand bucks. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was an interior, but still, I mean, it was a one and three quarter. It was solid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be worth checking with him. Mm -hmm. Is this being put on a door closer or anything like that? 
Could you the uh, rear facade, the, there's just paired windows up in the uh, gable end. Are they existing or is that proposed? Those are proposed. Uh, that whole rear facade um, is presently, well, the third floor, the, the, the present, the addition that's currently there kind of covers up the, oh, the, yeah, the vast yeah. majority of that. Yeah. Um, up on the second, up on the third floor, the windows that you're asking, there are two windows that are there. We're just pushing them closer together for okay. kind of floor plan purposes. That's why I wonder, because you, the earlier drawings, the existing is the top and then the yeah, we don't have existing on there because uh, for that particular yeah. one. And, uh, it's very easy to understand that, right? Uh-huh, yes, yeah. So, so you're I was a little confused when this occurred. Uh-huh, fair. Going from yeah. two, two singles to a gang, is that what you want? Um, yeah, I don't know if it'll be factory gang together, um, but, um, but yeah, they are, they are pushed right up to each other. Yeah, they won't be factory gang together. Um, There'll be two separate windows that are trimmed out to, to gang them together. Is there a reason you're losing the chimney? I know yeah. you're not going to use it anymore because you don't like to keep it in bad condition. It is. It is. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an odd one. Uh, that chimney um, does not go down to the basement. That chimney starts in between the first and second floor. It starts... Not that usual. Okay. Well, uh, there, is, there is a closet directly underneath the chimney. Uh, it, was, it was my bedroom, my, my wife's bedroom closet last year, um, directly underneath the chimney. Anything she wanted, like, she was going to put a pair of shoes on for that day, she would put them on the top shelf, um, just because it was closest <laughs> to the exhaust pipe uh, that would kind of go up and jog around to get into the chimney. Um, yeah, it's, we're getting rid of all combustion in the house. There won't be any combustion of any kind. No gas stove, no, um, no furnace. Going with heat pumps? All electric, totally electric house. I also find that the added little side windows on the gable end on the uh, east facade or south facade uh, really don't uh, uh, work very well. So it makes a significant change in that facade. Are there any other alternatives to get more light in there other than those small windows? Got a skylight on <laughs> There is currently one skylight. It would, uh, it's not showing, um, but um, we are keeping it. It's the east elevation, the driveway side. And, uh, <coughs> it's essentially right in the middle of the roof, so about 18 feet off of each gable end. What room is directly behind the window in the front on the south elevation? It's currently a bedroom. Um, it will be a living room. And what room is directly under the skylight? It's currently a room. I couldn't really tell you what it was called. It's uh, the stairs, which are a narrow little set of attic stairs, um, land uh, essentially right underneath where the skylight is. And that room has been um, it's been used as a dining room slash the refrigerator is in that room because it can't fit in the kitchen because the kitchen is the size of this table <laughs> and also the hallway to the bathroom is the kitchen. Are you changing the stairway? Uh, we are. Sorry, we didn't. It's not exterior, so we didn't give you the floor plans. No, I was just wondering if there was a way to do use a skylight to get more light into the mm -hmm. front room, mm -hmm. if that's going to be all open up and mm -hmm. you know, more open floor plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
it is going to be a more open floor plan that is presently there. Though, you know, up there in the attic, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 you can see the desire to have as much as much light in there as possible. Would you want to add another skylight beside that one, or not really? I mean, I'm not. Well, you're not a skylight fan. I'm not. This is the proposed third. It's a leak light. And that skylight is right there. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the left is the proposed second floor. On the right is the proposed third floor. Mm -hmm. The skylight is this little, so as you can oh, see, that, yeah, it's stairs existing are. skylight there. So it's cathedral? Is that what it will be cathedralized, if, if that's a word, cathedralized. Mm -hmm. It's not currently. I mean, I'm most concerned about changes on the front and the, the two that, uh, uh, the doors and those two little windows are uh, losing uh, double doors. Uh, I agree with Eric. They're concerning to me as well. And to me as well. That's why mm -hmm. I brought it up. So on the first floor in your final plan, is there a vestibule that's being created, or is it just open to the stair and then you go up to the upper level? From the front door? Yeah. Uh -huh. South elevation. Yeah, there is a little kind of entry area. You can I bet you can you can imagine it's you, know, you walk in the front door. There's a kind of the original staircase that will remain there. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, you know, you can kind of go up the stairs or, you know, you can, you know, you can kind of go along the staircase and there's a, you know, there would be a door into, into the first floor apartment. Um, so there's a little, to use your word, vestibule in that, in the common Is it a closed though or is it just open to, I mean, as you walk in those double doors, are you faced with the stair or is it, you are, okay. So there's no opportunity for energy savings oh. to to build. No. Uh, to leave those leave those doors and then build another like an set airlock, of doors. Like an airlock or right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, no, there's I don't think there's enough space before <coughs> the stair begins. What about interior um, storm doors or you know, an interior set of doors? You go through the existing front door and then instead of having a storm door in the front, you'd have something on the inside mm -hmm. that could help provide um, you know, make it tighter, prevent drafts and so on. Mm -hmm. In the name of maintaining the existing doors, is that? Well, yeah, or, yeah, if, if you were to maintain the existing doors, then maybe that's not really an option, but mm -hmm. just thinking of, if you were to restore those doors, if you could have a set of interior storms mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as an option. Mm -hmm. But it's conceivable if the doors were custom, they could put in double insulated into those lights. So, yeah, so they would be tight enough just right. on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> re, re gasketed and I mean, everything. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything special yeah. about the glass that's in there now, or is it just. It's just it's no, it, it's quite the opposite. It's, the uh, it's not. Not is original. It, <laughs> uh, it is, um, although it's two different panels, and, and both of them. So each 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 door panel has a different glass insert. They're absolutely not original. Um, I imagine they've been broken a number of times over the years, having tenants moving stuff in and out of very narrow spaces. Uh, I would, I would uh, like to see you come back with proposals and some costs for saving the front doors, either making them into a single door that opens, or you know, whatever the vestibule <coughs> piece of it, so that they're not don't remove the storm uh, doors at that at that point, uh, and. Uh, some also proposal to remove uh, the, those old side windows. 
and we can certainly. I don't have any problem with the demolition in the back, the changing the sort of false windows. So a lot of houses were built with those windows, just to have. A, I don't want to say a placeholder, but to preserve the pattern. And I don't have any problem with the removal of the door and turning it into a window, or or the demolition of the rear. If we were to suggest that there's a way to um, uh, either retrofit that existing door or or um, fabricate a a new door that um, that read like a double door, as you were suggesting, yeah. but but, um, but functioned as a single door. Uh, um, I mean, I, I think it should. Uh, uh, it should use the existing door as a pattern. Mm -hmm. So if we were to say that we could um, either do that um, new or, or kind of revise what's there in some way, um, whichever one is least expensive but, but achieves the function of, of, of what we're looking for there. Um, Sounds like the ones that are there, I'm not sure if Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I, I suspect that's true. If there's any repair mm -hmm. option for that. Yeah. If they're that deteriorated, it's almost yeah. as cost effective to build a new door yeah. as it is to try to yeah. piece, yeah. piece so, and patch so that in the, back together. In, the, in, the, in that spirit, if we were to say that we would then fabricate a new door um, that, that functioned as a single door, but, um, but read as this as this upper image does yeah the profile of that mm -hmm. existing door mm -hmm. the double door mm -hmm. um you know i don't know if there's a i don't think there's like an astragal where the two doors meet i think they're just kind of like sloppily fitted together um so maybe that's just in the form of like you know a soccer down right. the middle of that door just to give it that to give it that i guess the read. question would be the handle where do you put <laughs> Interesting, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, a dark, dark handle on one side, whether it's a knob or something that you know sort of disappears into the. Well, into we don't door want three rather, knobs. We want one knob. Right? <laughs> well, one knob uh -huh. for the new door, but it, it could be a, you know, a thumb latch handle or a knob or whatever you're proposing for mm -hmm. hardware. What's mm -hmm. there now? There is one knob on the right hand panel as you're looking at it. When it when it opens from the middle, correct? Yeah. Yeah. When it when it hasn't fallen off. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Is the door proposed to be a right hand swing to the inside right against the wall? Hand. Correct. Okay. Yes. So it would be a knob on the left. Correct. In the dark bronze or something. What color? Well, if it's fur, a natural color. I, I would think clear that we finish. would be painting it. Um, we would be painting it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It could be similar to the color that is existing. It could be, it could be the same. I, yeah. uh, w one question I think we're faced with oftentimes that we really need guidance for on this commit from this committee is a question like that. Do you go with creating a door that is the same color and sort of maybe tricks the maybe tricks the viewer mm -hmm. into thinking that that's original when it's not, or do you do you do something that? in some way respects the original but is distinct so as to not confuse the viewer that it's not an original element? Something that would be compatible with doors of that time. If you were to take a disc sander and work your way through, you probably would find six, you could find four to six different colors as you work your way through. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, some people have tried to go down to the original color, but anything you know, most of the doors were either dark green or dark burgundy or, I mean, there was a variety of colors, black, dark browns. I mean, there were a variety of colors that were put, used, you know, a hundred years ago. So Probably anything, one, one of them. actually, it's actually it's sort of burgundy. a deep burgundy color was one. Well, we'll stay away from the left. Or turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pick so, up enough. So again, on one of the <laughs> again one of the criteria that we use when you're evaluating a project, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. So, preservation or reconstruction. 
re obviously reconstruction or, or building something new to match what was there if something's deteriorated beyond its useful life if we can't re restore it. You know, you re build a new one to match. Can I just ask a question? So because we're talking about changing it from a double to potentially a single door that looks like the double, mm -hmm. because this comes to the whole not having the knobs in the middle or fake knobs in the middle, you just want the one knob. The rest of the door still looks the same, but because mm -hmm. it's not original, you yeah. can put that knob over as long as sort of the colors match and the style of the fixture, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. For those at home and for me as I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my first preference would be to leave the double doors, fix them. I mean, that's the first preservation option would be to leave the double doors but make them functional. That's the first preservation. The second, I think, preservation option would be to somehow connect the existing doors and leave those as make it as a single door. And the third is replicating a uh, the, all the form and, and shape except making it into a single door. So if we committed to doing one of those three options, um, and, and in full disclosure, I am having an, I think we both have, Theo and I both have an interest of walking out of here tonight with something that doesn't require us to come back here in two weeks from now. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, if we were to commit to one of those three options, um, is that something, you know, I, I think I've, you know, is that something that can be kind of written into the notes that this, yes. that this approval is contingent yeah. on mm -hmm. one of those three things? And yes. we can, you know, evidence that. Of get, course. A, get a quote right. for all those things so you can see the you know see the full picture of what we were looking at here um, um, and just one note because you are coming in two weeks for the development review board mm -hmm. um, they could I could potentially just submit those to you in two weeks to look without them coming if you want and those comments can still go to the development review board that evening well, we can give them the alter yep, we can give them, them the alternatives yep. now, and as long as they would agree to that, mm -hmm. they don't even need to yep. come back to us. I mean, I'm just saying so that you can yeah, just see what the materials are. Okay. And okay. what about the Palladium width windows. of the proposed door? You're not going to require them to go to a 42-inch single door. <laughs> well, no, I think that was one of the options, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's if you're going to well build a new door, you want a 42-inch door. Well, that would or that would match what's that there. Would, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could build new double doors. I mean, that could be an option as well. It's just, mm -hmm. it, and it just depends on the condition. I haven't yeah. looked at the condition. I mean, it's just some like, of these old things you probably know are easy to repair, and not easy to repair, but repairable because they're put together with dolls, and they can come apart, and new pieces can be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can just appreciate that from a user's perspective, squeezing through a 20-inch door with, you know, handful yeah, of groceries is like not, not ideal. I'm talking about the if you build a single door to replicate that design, do you want a 42, 40, 38, or 36? Match. Okay. Match 42. I think it should be the same as it is. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Which is actually frequently use commercial door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I, uh, I think the, those little, little side windows in the gable, uh, I think you need to find another way to get light. I don't have any problem with additional skylights. Uh, I understand the sort of technical difficulties with skylights. See? You know, they're not great <coughs> from a maintenance heat loss or whatever. But those those windows on the on the on the primary facade of the building uh, uh, just are a significant change. What about changing from that one window to two windows uh, similar to the similar to the style on the back mm -hmm. that we're showing, rather than having two tiny windows? Uh, a sort of as a head and shoulders, as, as you currently are seeing on the front, doubling the front window. And, well, and, some, and somehow not hitting the, uh, we call this the... The rake track. Yeah. The freeze board. Yeah, the freeze board. I, I think that's better than this, but I think the front facade of the building is very, 
you know, it's, it's incremental change to do it. I don't care on the rear, that's fine to do it that way. But on the main facade of the building, we gotta do as much uh, preservation as we can. Would a small shed dormer be um, too costly, perhaps, to do? What is that, the east elevation, sort of setback, small one in the living room area? As you know, I think we're, we're already up against some financial uh -huh. ceilings. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's viable to right. introduce mm -hmm. um, an expense like that. Sure. I would love to have double shed dormers. From a head height perspective, uh -huh. getting more light in, it is a major change in the building, especially on the east elevation as that's the driveway side and you see that as you're walking towards the uh -huh. state house, that's the side of the building you see as you're right. walking towards the state house. The other see. side is up against the other house and is obscured by a tree, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. it has carries less of an impact on that side. Sure. And I wasn't thinking of something that's spanned the whole roof slope, just you know, uh, right. enough to provide more light in the yeah. in the living room and have it set back from the front a bit. But and that's asphalt shingle, correct? So yes. skylight early. Yeah. It's, compared to a dormer, it has to be significantly cheaper. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one, one other thing. We uh, call out flat siding. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it's just like tongue and groove or shiplap that's an absolutely flat surface? Mm -hmm. And that, and that goes on the dormer as well. Yeah, although actually I'm not, we haven't been able to really crawl up there yet. It's, there's this, there's this, um, well, you can see it in some of the existing photographs. There's this asphalt siding that's, that's covering up, um, you know, a good part of the building now, including the dormer yeah. um, sidewalls. Mm -hmm. um, I actually am hoping that, um, that there's perfectly viable clapboards underneath those, underneath that asphalt siding that can just get caulked and painted up there. It does show on the dormer presently because we just don't know the condition of what's underneath that asphalt siding. Um, but you'll see that the majority of that is on the rear side of the building and on that little kind of first floor um, little bump out on the, on the west elevation. Mm -hmm. So if it were clapboard underneath, would you replace it in kind, or you, would you still go with this if you had to replace the clapboard? For the dormer? For either. Well, we know it's not going to be clapboards on the back side because that addition, you know, they've, it, it's like that addition is presently glommed onto the rear side of the building. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a handful of clapboards kind of up above the roof line, but based on kind of some window locations and the demolition of the addition, um, there's gonna, I mean, there's, there's just not, there's gonna be practically nothing left there to, to salvage on the rear side of the building. Does that, does that answer your question? Well, you're, you're, you're proposing a different siding, is what, what yes. you're saying. Yes, on the rear side. To the north the of this. The part of the south. For the bump out. And mm -hmm. That's like, what, 10 feet back or so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I did peek underneath the asphalt siding down there on the bump out because it's on the first floor. And it's it's just, it's, um, it's it's been butchered over the years. It's not it's not something that's gonna the asphalt's not gonna come off, and the the, the clapboards aren't gonna be in great condition underneath yeah, it. It's, they probably did those dormers and additions. That asphalt's probably was when they built those. I, I I understand why you say that, but there is there is clapboards underneath. Um, I don't know about the dormer, but I know that on the bump out there's there's clapboards underneath it. Um, aren't in good condition. They're in terrible condition. So the flat <coughs> siding is being chosen <coughs> from the cost perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Were there any other options proposed for the front window? Uh, I understand the desire to have more light up there, but I think that if you <coughs> paired those windows at that elevation, it looks to me like you'd run up right up against the, uh, the trim, <laughs> the roof trim. Uh, so uh, that, I think that gets to be problematic. On the back, I think the windows are maybe you've got shorter a little lower. I think that's true, actually. Also, it looks like there's less trim, less yeah. fascia board on the back. Yeah. It's not as much, mm -hmm. there's not that's as much detail, well. so mm -hmm. that that's true as well. You, you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there no overhang on the back? There is no overhang on the back. Is that the way it is currently? Yeah. <laughs> well, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like they stopped the nice details. <laughs> Like, just stopped them. They didn't like return them around the back or complete complete it. Mm -hmm. um, That's interesting when you look at the existing you know detailed corner boards and and the uh, the overhang and all the trim and then yeah, you look the back. It's like wow. <laughs> it's all there on the front side. Like every piece of fancy adornment you could want is all right there on the front side. But uh, wonder if it was built like that in the 1870s when it was built. Yeah, I can't tell you. I, I will have I will have to consult the original building instructions because I have 12 handwritten pages that are the instructions from the designer, the architect, to the builders how okay. to build aspects of the house. Oh. And it's it's some of it is to do with the uh, with the plaster, mm -hmm. how to perform the plaster job. Um, not all of the twelve pages are legible. But <laughs> wow, twelve full pages I found in the uh, in the space between the second and third floor, huh. along with uh, an old can of something, maybe a hair product from the eighteen hundreds, <laughs> and uh, some old old things. Glass. People say, say money to a grocery book, an old grocery book. <laughs> is yeah. the existing skylight in good condition? It's in fair condition. It doesn't leak. It's operable. Is it a Velux or a fixed or what? I haven't looked that closely at it. Mm -hmm. It it articulates, opens. Crank or yeah, crank. hinged or crank. No, I was just wondering if it wasn't a good condition. An alternative might be to put a larger one in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More light. Mm -hmm. So similar to the door, I guess I'm wondering if we can um, propose what, like, you know, if there are other options that would be um, <coughs> acceptable to um, the board. Um, um, that would be very good. <laughs> um, I guess I'm similar to the door. I guess I'm interested in to see if we can have a similar conversation regarding the windows. Um, is, the, is, it, is there, are there no alternatives that would be acceptable? Um, you know, are, are, would it be acceptable to have two windows and, um, you know, have the trim kind of overlap? You see that sometimes, um, you know, where the, the head casing kind of overlaps the freeze board and, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, is it, would that be, it, would that be, would that be acceptable? What's the height off the floor of the sill inside? I don't know that I know that. Um, I mean, I'm not Hard sure. Hard to tell where the board system is Say in uh, relation to the knee, knee height. Having opened and closed that window a number of times, knee, knee height. So. 20 inches, 22 inches. the third floor. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty, yeah, it looks like knee height, doesn't it? Roughly, yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, I wonder if you could achieve it, if you could do, if you could do two and lowered it. Mm -hmm. Similar to the, really Similar. to replicate the rear side of the building. What would, would that be acceptable? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think that, I uh, understand that you need to do something with the door, but I think avoiding changes to the primary facade is, is, is pretty important to get get away from this sort of incremental change to buildings where you all of a sudden you find your 
you're done, you're lost, you've lost the building. Uh, and uh, I mean, the other facades, changing doors to windows, that's all fine because it's not the primary facade of the building. Mm -hmm. I think an additional skylight would be fine. I don't like changing the windows in the front. Mm -hmm. Skylights? Skylights would be one of the acceptable yes. options. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Whose money are we spending? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that guy. <laughs> What's the size of the skylight that's there now? I really don't know. I haven't, I haven't it's studied it. Is it on the you floor can, plan? It is on the, it does show on the floor plan. I don't yeah. know that it shows the size. size. You can kind of see it on one of the pictures of the side of the building. Yeah, you, yeah, I noticed that too. Um, well, you may be able to tell with the comparison against the Stella. I don't know. I mean, it's something like it's 20 by small. 36 or something like this. Um, it's not. It's not a. It's not a huge. It's not a huge skylight unit. It's a. It's a very average-sized skylight. Skylight unit. It's something to the tune of 20, 20, 22, 36 by 36 or 42 or something like that. What's the framing rafters? On center. On center. Oh, I don't know yet. Yeah, I'm sure there's a skylight that can just drop right in between. I'm sure they're, you know, 24. On they're, they're, I'm yeah. sure they're spaced further apart than we would build it presently, you know, in 2019. Um, so they're um, logs. Mm -hmm. um, you leaving the logs, or are you going to sister them 12 inch, <laughs> 12 inch rafters beside them? We do need to put something on them for insulation depth, but. But we're leaving. We're leaving what's there, there. But they don't provide. Uh, I'm assuming they're not provide. I haven't seen them yet, but I'm presuming that they they won't provide the depth we need for insulation purposes. So, this is tangential. But what are you insulating? Just that curiosity. You're spraying, spraying it, or yeah. spray foam. Correct. What uh, product? Um, Corvold. Yeah. Purple and spent like. <laughs> Who does your foaming? All seasons or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used the uh, soy based foam? No. No, we did use a, it wasn't a soy based foam, but it's a, a zero GWV product, um, GWP product. I'm forgetting the manufacturer. Some places are having problems with soy-based product because yeah, I know. Berman, right? they're saying <laughs> mice, mice love the yeah. flavor. I don't like Corbon. I actually, I, I, oh no, a sheet foam. I had a sheet foam. Mice apparently like sheet foam. I've had a couple of projects where I get calls from clients saying yeah. there's these little sheet foam droppings on the <laughs> on the floor because the mice like the sheet foam too. Really. What a way to kill mice. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Genetically. <laughs> so the windows are what are we what are we what are we saying? I think the proposal is to hopefully you would be willing to either add another skylight or a bigger one. Mm -hmm. To replace the one that's there. Mm -hmm. Does the one that's there have a crank or does have a crank. And it opens outward? Correct. Would, would the new have to be operable? No. So you could have, could you conceivably have add a skylight fixed on the skylight side, the existing skylight side, and do you have room to flip one over to the other side on the dorm side? Room in, in what sense? The roof area. Oh yeah, there's plenty of roof over yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I just think, you know, I, we we can certainly we will look into, you know, the financial analysis of it. But I would not be surprised if it's dead, not on arrival, but on, you know, first glance. To do two, or to just to do any additional skylight. 
do any. We're, we're at that point budgetary wise, you know, where we're scaling back significantly from all the interior stuff that we already hope to do. But you'd be eliminating these two smaller windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the view is not terrific. You look out into the biggest blight in the city of Montpelier, which is the pit. <laughs> the backside of the post office and Vermont Mutual Insurance Company. Deal with that one day. <laughs> um, but it's, it's perfectly south facing and, and does get great light. Mm -hmm. Part of the building heats up really nicely currently, because there's no insulation. <laughs> We've got a number of things we have to uh, cover with this, uh, including the demolition. And uh, I'm fine with that. And that's, I went back and looked at that one of the other times you came with you. And, uh, Pretty much junk, <laughs> and uh, uh, you're replacing all the windows. Yes. And there are they two divided lights. They are simulated divided lights with the spacer bar. Mm -hmm. The spacer bar, mm -hmm. and um, on the outside as well, so that you're not you're just not looking at one flat piece of glass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With a Marvin window, that's how those are done. Yeah, yeah. there's the. Yeah. Yeah. That's exterior and interior mountains, and it just has the simulated and it has the spacer bar between the two panes of glass. And then changing the doors into the windows and eliminating the, not changing, changing the door into a window and then removing the clabbered windows that you have. Mm -hmm. so. Removing the chimney. Removing the chimney. Yep. Well, that's there's one picture here where you can see the chimney, and it looks like it's. If you can see the deterioration. Yeah, on you it. can yeah. see through. It's yeah. starting to lose yeah. the top courses. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's spreading too. I don't know that there was a fire in the building, but um, as we've exposed uh, on the second floor, um, done some interior demolition around the chimney and expose some of that uh, to gauge you know, its condition. Um, and there is a, a significant amount of soot um, on all of the, not even on the chimney, but on all of the logs and all of the, uh, all the structural support mm -hmm. around it, extending out to upwards of a few feet. There, I don't so, know if there is. Soot or char? <laughs> char. Char, yeah. Probably had a chimney fire at one point. Could, be. Could have been. And with it boxed in like that, it's amazing they saved the building. It's just a... I'm not sure how some things happened with this place. <laughs> it's a bit of a mystery. Uh, interesting to note, um, I've had some, some folks um, um, who specialize in, in this era of construction and reconstruction, and they said that the second floor, these three windows here, none of that's original. That this was, uh, there was actually a porch that was inset on the second floor. It's all framed out, um, the first eight feet going back from that wall and those windows. Mm -hmm. That that would have been in, in really an inset porch. <coughs> they showed me where the door was and how everything was lined up, the framing for the windows mm -hmm. inset in that porch, and that. They later added. Just closed it in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Later closed that in. <coughs> so you're wondering why they are spacing out the windows. But, uh, <laughs> that would be fun. That'd be nice to have, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's really fun. Alfresca. This is the west elevation here, it right? Is. So that has the asphalt shingles on the main um, elevation itself. Yeah. So you're hoping to remove those and find clavers underneath. I think that's what we're going to yeah. find there, yes. Because otherwise, if they weren't in good shape, you'd put new clavers back uh, yeah, on, that on that section. Exactly, yeah, correct. Okay. 
that bump out is also unlikely to be original, although it is old. Uh -huh. The there's there's not a discernible break in the flooring on the interior. I, I actually crawled around in the crawl space a couple of weeks ago and saw evidence that I think it actually is original. Could be, it could be original. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it? it's been a point of debate for a while. Okay. Yeah. What is it used for? Here? It, uh, the bump out. Yeah. It just extends um, the rooms. Just makes the rooms larger. But it it's mm -hmm. not a it's, it's not, not a, a separate, separate room. Correct. Okay. A separate space. It's about. Uh, Four and a half feet, five feet. Okay. Thank you. Why would they do that? <laughs> so many questions. Mm -hmm. Wish you could speak to the builders. You have their thoughts in yeah. writing. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. It does be very really cool to frame. Yeah, yeah. I've got an appointment with the state um, architectural Archives. historian. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, I did speak with David Sheets, and he he's connecting me with the, the architectural historian. Cool. Yeah. So we can get all the documents and all the things I found cleaned up, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we'll find more over time. Mm -hmm. I found an old yearbook, a high school yearbook, in one of my walls once. Yeah. Um, from, dated from what year? What did I do? 1904, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. Mostly if I know whiskey bottles. <laughs> <laughs> or newspapers. Yes. And lots of newspapers. I found, newspapers I found many like, shards of newspaper. Yeah. And newspaper that was, I don't know, glued onto glass or adhered to glass. Mm -hmm. Some uh, walnut shells. <laughs> I wonder if we we'll put those there. They were found in bunches, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't we'll talk about it. Yeah. Tenants. Yeah. Was it with you or standing in the driveway and we saw the squirrels? Yeah, the two houses over at, uh, I guess it'd be 23 Court Street. Uh, just a couple of squirrels running around and just a hole the size of a pie plate right in the freeze board. Oh, oh. Okay. They did, they did that to my house. I trapped squirrels I caught in three weeks I caught 50 squirrels <gasps> what? And, and relocated them, <laughs> which I since found out was not, a, not appropriate no. against the law. Yeah. Were they 50, 50 unique squirrels <laughs> or <laughs> what? 50 different unique squirrels different. or maybe well, re re visitors? I trapped them. I thought, they were, I thought maybe they were coming back, so I painted all their tails orange. <laughs> to see if they're coming back. And one, one or two did. <laughs> Literally? Came back for more. <laughs> can, I, can I summarize what I think we're, what I think we're saying yes. here tonight? Um, there, the, there's, two, there's two items on here that, um, as drawn, are, are not going to be acceptable to design review. The door, which we're all on the same page about that. That was a clear and yeah. lucid conversation. The window, what I, what I think we're saying is that we're not changing the facade of the south, the side. south facade yeah. and that that existing window is going to be the existing window and if we want to add more light our one chance to do that is um, a skylight is, is that the summary I, of what we're saying let me, let me read what I wrote down just okay. from everybody's what everybody's saying and if I need to amend this let me know from <laughs> the committee or the applicants and for the door we said recommend one of the three options for the front and south facing door. Repair or reconstruct the existing 21 inch double doors. Number two, repair or reconstruct and attach the existing double doors so they function as a single door. Or number three, replace the front double doors with a new single 42 inch door with an appearance and profile which matches the design of the existing double doors. Mm -hmm. Number four, replace the in kind. In kind. And that's a fourth option. Mm -hmm. So brand new 21 inch double doors. Which even though they would still be narrow, you might be able to have a different fastener in the middle that would work better than what you have. Uh, yeah, it's 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 all about the function and, and being mindful of 
second and third floor tenants yeah. sharing that space and yep. mm -hmm. coming in and out. No, we have, uh, my husband's family has a cottage with those double doors. And uh, yeah, they're not easy when you're trying to bring things in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, the fourth option is we replace the existing double doors with new in kind, <coughs> same, same thing. And then for the window, the recommendation was not changing the single window on the south face of the attic level. Alternative recommendation is to add either an additional skylight on the east or west side of the roof or increasing the size of the existing skylight with either fixed or operable skylight. Okay. Um, the fixed aren't that expensive. Mm -hmm. We replaced two of those in a, in a roof job, and I was surprised they didn't cost any more than the originals had 30 years earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, the did the originals were operable; these were fixed, mm -hmm. and it was a nice. It was a, it was a Valux, a fixed Valux. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did All we right. want to say something about the back porch where we were talking about the brace? Is that something that we wanted to say. Angled, angled brace. Did you want to leave that as an alternative or a recommendation? Um, well, I mean, I think it would maybe function better if it didn't come all the way down. And it would look better, too, I think, would, to have it angled. Um, but maybe it's, it's not a requirement, you know, if it's going to it's more expensive to, to do it on the back, too, when you store it double-sided. Yeah, and if you have circulation directly underneath that, you're basically forcing people to, otherwise you're going to have tenants knocking their heads. I know I'd bump my head on it, for sure. You'd have a lot of fun in, on the third floor of this house as it is presently, <laughs> navigating the kitchen and the bathroom. And uh, I've got a few inches on you, and I've had a lot of fun on it. You just have to find a tenant who's about 4'11". Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I should put that in the advertisement. And yeah. I'd probably get into trouble for not being an equal opportunity it's landlord. Discriminating yeah. against all right. people. Yeah. Like myself. Yeah. yeah. I lived in the third floor at an apartment for a while. It was interesting. <laughs> and, uh, adding that, that unit really changes the use of the building. It does. Is there any... Um, logic or it would it be um, advisable to uh, put in your notes um, the what I heard you Eric say about the condition of of that rear addition as we gear up to talk with development review is there any um, sense of uh, adding this I always get the boards and committees mixed up I forget which is which part of me but is it is it is there any logic in um, in having you all from design review suggest that um, the quality of that addition is is truly substandard I hope so I'm not sure that's true but I hope so <laughs> basically if we don't comment on it it's approved as you applied for uh -huh. okay yeah. and it's approved and again, we'll go through the criteria, which I still have to do, and that'll, uh, it, it should be explained why it's approved. Well, that and there'll be, especially because you have a two-week time period mm -hmm. here in between, there'll be minutes from this meeting mm -hmm. um, that will cover more than just what's written down uh -huh. here, that we'll talk about the different things that were discussed today, and those can be brought forward to the DRB meeting in two weeks. Okay. Okay. And I'll be there to report on, yeah. on this meeting as well. Okay. Draft. Yes. Well, except you'll be in meeting two more. So. If, we, if we approve them. If you approve them, there'll be at least a draft draft with your notes. Mm -hmm. Correct. And again, the rear brace. We just the recommendation was raising the rear support brace for the rear porch roof to allow head height room for accessibility. Great. Thank you. And the criteria, evaluation criteria number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Again, acceptable with the recommendations. Harmony of exterior design with other properties of the district. Again, ex 
acceptable with the recommendations. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, not proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in lighting or exterior. Oh, we, uh, we don't, perhaps it didn't make it into the application. We do have some, some exterior, like safety lighting. Um, uh, a couple of, like one next to the front door and one um, all, all along the back. Is there lighting by the front door now? Uh, yes and light. no. Yeah, not functioning. Yeah. Yes, I mean, there is a fixture what is there. It, like a, a wall, wall or ceiling light? Um, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's a wall stance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next to the Would you put something back there? Same thing? Okay. Yeah. So that's really not a change. Agreed. Yeah, I guess the change. Is there anything, the, signi a significant change or an addition? Of, I guess the we'll, lighting. On the rear, I guess, uh, and we're not showing it, but we should have. So thank you for bringing it up. There, there should be lighting on the uh, next to the rear door. Um, so if we can. Uh, and and the rear right now is is it? Yeah. Is it, you know, it's going to be demolished. So. Right. So on the new rear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, a wall fixture oh. or a ceiling can. Actually, we can say either one. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Unless you want to light off the recycle, then you go with cans. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, it's put on an emotion, and every time the raccoon tries <laughs> to go. help himself. <laughs> or your we, neighbor we, squirrels. We, yes. Right. The squirrels. Biggest issue has been skunks. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't shoot them in the basement. <laughs> no, we didn't shoot them in the basement, but they they uh, they made it in the basement. Oh. And in doing so, they spray a lot, and it came up through and yeah. into the first floor and completely covered all of my tenants' clothing. Like two legislators. Oh. This was two years ago. Uh, right about this time, it's, it was right in February. It's mating season, uh, and there was a cleaning bill for all of their clothes. Oh. Oh gosh. Yeah. Really, it was really special. <laughs> I got to call it two. Did you get the yeah, smell out? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. not really. Not really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We could make a comment about legislators smelling that way. We won't do that. <laughs> I, I got a, like a few really spirited phone calls. Oh, I <clears throat> The building's been sitting completely vacant since uh, September. You don't live there, too? Um, not at the moment. I'm currently renting a place in Essex. Mm -hmm. I have intentions of moving back into this place when it's done. Mm -hmm. On the first floor? Or the uh, probably the third floor. In one bedroom. Are you going to shrink? <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I enjoy the view of the state house from the little dormer window there is. That little dormer looks right onto the dome. Does it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and you get good at remembering when to turn your head sideways. Yeah. We'll have just just a little bit more room to work with with the cathedralizing. Yeah. Yeah. It's about seven inches or seven feet two inches now. So are you putting collar ties higher up in order to transfer the loads? There's color. I mean, there's there's whether they're color, considered collar ties or just ceiling nailers. There's there's structure up there presently, you know, at ceiling heights. So that that's just going to, the structure that is there is the structure that will stay there. Um, those those collar ties, that's really what they are. Um, will just uh, stay exposed. With the log rafter, sometimes it's a good instead of just using a two by four across, just put a one inch on either side so you don't get twisting. With the log rafters, mm -hmm. you get just as much strength. Mm -hmm. I had some experience with that. Yeah. So for the utility, we just said either wall mounted or ceiling mounted light fixtures beside or above the rear door at applicant's option. 
may be installed for illumination of the door and the trash, tra I can't say it, trash recycling area or approval. Okay. Um, Mr. And the last recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Uh, not, applicable. not applicable at this location. All in favor of the application with the changes recommended, raise your hand. And one of you can sign that above my name. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out for this one one stop uh, <laughs> one stop meeting tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your patience and flexibility. Yes. <laughs> thanks. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Anyway. Check with Bruce. He, he really, I was shocked at mm -hmm. how little he's charged to do stuff for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. okay. right. Thank you for all your recommendations. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll see you in two weeks. Feel free to call if you have questions in between now and then about what to do for DRB. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Minutes of January the 22nd. Anybody have any? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> like, you have any comments? Yeah. <laughs> I comments. Buy that guy. Where's the way they're picking on you for the comment a few minutes ago? <laughs> Are we in balance? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to have somebody read them carefully and note when something is not as clear as well, it should be. Well, when it's public record, you know. No, it's nice. Well, I mean, the, the good thing is the videos are always there, so if people really want to, they can just I know, but go through the whole thing. Like but this is flagrant, but it's semantic and oh, punctuation yeah. errors. And yep. Well, and that's and that's after I've usually reviewed them and tried to catch where I can. So thank you. No, they've done much better. I'm sure. So basically, these were two parking lots. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if there are no changes required, do I hear a motion to approve? I'll move to approve them. Your second? I'll second I'm it. Staining. You were I was, gone. I was gone. <laughs> I was the way second. Uh, you have enough, though. You have three. Yes. So all in favor, raise your hand. Minutes are approved. Any other business? Adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. You just did. <laughs> second. 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 All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand.